Welcome to the first Scrimcast here on Chasm Converses. So I am joined by my very good friend, Sam Upton, who is making his second appearance on uh, the podcast, which is a first. The first guest to make a second Whoa. appearance. Yeah, man. Absolutely crazy. Um, but basically, we would uh, we released a song recently under the name Scrimmage. Um, all about uh, baristas and making coffees and a lot of uh, really fucked shit, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> and get, getting the evils. Getting the evils out and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, cool scrimmage. And so what I thought we'd do for today is, uh, since I've got Sam here, uh, we'd uh, have a bit of a chat and a bit of a reflection, go back over uh, the idea of uh, this, this scrimmage idea that's actually – you know, which turned into a very niche idea, which then turned into something that was actually like, oh, wow, we could actually kind of do this and the timing seems right. So, um, yeah, let's just see how it all goes and whatever. But like, this is actually release day, even though this podcast will be coming out in a couple, maybe five days after release, but it, it came out for me last night. And uh, for you, Sam, I think it came out this morning because obviously we're in differing countries now, which is very strange, but... Even so, very yeah, strange. yeah, because it's like what it's nighttime over there for you right now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like five thirty, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got like nine. Yeah, bang on. Bang yeah, on. nice. Yeah, well, I was like nine, about nine. So yeah, um, but no. So I think like we'll like dive into this into this past idea. I think um, it all sort of came to a head around Unify twenty twenty. I think it was that we sort of came up with this thing we were both going to a music festival in Taiwan Lower Victoria called Unify Heavy Metal Gathering and we were driving driving there oh that's around the time of the bushfires actually wasn't it yeah oh. we were driving into the smoke yeah that oh that was insane just just before COVID as well just snuck in yeah yeah that's right yeah that was so weird because wow it it just looks so it looked like fucking up again, in my opinion. Like just the entire of Melbourne was just covered in smoke and you couldn't even see anything, even in like the major city and stuff. That was like, oh man, that was, yeah, that's bringing back the memories right now. Um, <laughs> but no, we were going to a festival and we were volunteering there because we both couldn't afford tickets to go um, outright. So I think we just like went there to volunteer because you vol- I think we volunteered for two for two days, around five or eight hours or something, and then yeah, well, I think we got there a day early as well. Hey, yeah, we did. Yeah, because we stayed Brief, with one of your prior friends. to the festival. Because mm, mm. yeah. I think we left on the Monday and we stayed with your friend on the uh, Monday night. And Tuesday we arrived and we worked that day. We worked Wednesday, and then Thursday was the first day of the festival, and then we got into it. And that was the you, you weren't drinking that week that that weekend either, which was actually really cool. Yeah, that yeah. That was, I always do a bit of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was. I remember being very, very impressed that you were that you had the whole weekend without doing it, especially with the bands and all this like the festival vibe and stuff. That was like, yeah, still so impressive, man. Like, I went to download like just the other week, like the other day, and I had the same sort of impression of yeah, I won't drink, and then like. On the first day, I was like, "Oh, what a beer!" <laughs> it looked it looked pretty warm over there. It's so warm, it's so hot, man. Like so, like yeah, beer weather. Four straight days of just twenty five degree sun with no cloud. So it was pretty much like any festival that you have. Any festival in Adelaide in January is pretty much what the vibe was. So you it's have like to perfect weather by the sounds. Of yeah, it. it was nuts. Perfect weather. Everyone was sunburned by the first day. It was crazy, man. I saw I saw people. <laughs> Literally walking around with no shirts on, who were literally bright red, who couldn't even they couldn't even put a shirt on. Like they were just it was fucked. But anyway, divulging a bit. But <laughs> um, but yeah, so that we did that, and then so we vol- we volunteered the first two days there, and so we were doing various things like um, putting caps on poles, 
and uh, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Important stuff. <laughs> the Lord's work. <laughs> Putting, um, doing that. I think uh, I made some signs, which was probably the hi- one of the highlights for me. I, I wrote some signs and put them up on the big, um, uh, the the big poles and shit to tell people where to go, like this way to the venue and the lighthouse and the bathrooms that were probably an abomination. Um, yeah, and beyond, beyond that, like uh, we were absolute. Just they took one look at us and they went, "You blokes are bloody useless." <laughs> <laughs> Not like immediately took us in any buggy, uh, prior, like any buggy uh, privileges just gone. Yeah, yep. uh, we'll just keep them together. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just send them off on the fucking paddock over there. Yeah. <laughs> Build some fences. <laughs> definitely, we were the we were definitely the bunch that the you know the teacher tr- like back in school when the teacher tried to like you know separate the the kids who were like you know a bad influence on each other. She'd try to separate them, but eventually they'd come back together. I think that was sort of us in a nutshell <laughs> over over there. Um, but yeah, no, we started doing that, and we did. We ended up, I don't even know if this is actually what this is the thing. I don't know if this is actually what it's called, but the guy who was talking to us told us it was called scrimming. So we were like, okay, this is called scrimming, obviously. But basically, that's when you get like that. It, I think it's called. I literally think it's called scrim. Like the the, the black yeah, see through is- sort of like material, um, and you basically just attach it to fencing. And it just becomes like a big barrier to block things off or to hang posters from and all that sort of thing. And so basically we were just doing that for the whole time that we were volunteering after the caps on poles thing and all the rest of it. So, um, and yeah, we just obviously like, you know, classic, I think it was very, very similar to download, like very hot. Uh, you know, we all had the high vis on the big hats and shit. Um, a whole lot of sunblock. And, uh, yeah, we just got bored after a while and we just sort of started coming up with characters and shit. And this is the time when well, I, I especially was very heavily, even though I, I still am, very heavily into um, the Auntie Donna podcast. And I think we had both also had a very um, – we'd also started to really get into um, The Dollop as well. <laughs> and they're various awesome episodes of things. So we just decided to, I think we just sort of made some random wacky characters together to pass the time as we were trying to scrim to the best of our abilities. And um, I think, yeah, the K tie, which was yours, short for cable tie, because you were in charge of the cable, because <laughs> t- <laughs> you were in charge of the cable ties. <laughs> you couldn't. I can't do. I just. I don't know, man. I can never get them around the right way. I could. I can never. Just whenever I would put a cable tie on, it'd be upside down, or it wouldn't work, or I wouldn't put it in far enough, or I would put it too far, and then I have to fucking cut it off. But oh, and, yeah. and then old mate, old mate, uh, tension over here, my mm. counterpart. Yes. He like you know, it'd be blowing a fucking gale on that that hill, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and I would be going, oh, I, I can't hold it. <laughs> but it was th- actually- thankfully. It was. Thankfully, we had tension on the job. Tension, mm. and he was able to pull it, pull it with his giant forearms, <laughs> <laughs> get, get, yeah. get the tension required yeah. for the the cable tie to do his job. Put it all forward, yeah, mate. mate. We got those fences up. Yeah, we took did. us maybe three times the <laughs> the. Uh, at, <laughs> at uh, the best thing I remember that is like I think literally the end of the pretty much the end of the stint that we were doing it because it was for some reason it was just so fucking windy I think that's because it was pushing the wind away that's why everyone thought we were going to get covered in bushfires and shit because it was so windy and in the end the majority of our screaming all just fucking came off and started flapping away in the wind (laughs) forgot about that I forgot about even like just literally 90% of the work we did to get these these free tickets it was all in vain it was just like a waste of time yeah I think they had to bring in like an emergency scrim thing oh god this is the best I think the best thing about that that I that I can remember because we on the because on the Thursday, the festival typically begins on the Thursday. They have like the pre-show and shit. So on the Wednesday night, you get kicked out of the staff campsite. And so you have to go and um, put your tent in the in the site where everybody else is going to go. But the best thing about this was that there was no one else in that site yet because no one else had arrived. And the fence was right next door to, you know, the that separated the staff from the, from the regulars, I'll call them. 
And so we both decided, well, I'm not going to put the, the tent up and put it in the car. We'll just throw it over the fence. So, <laughs> we, both, so we both threw our tents over the fence, <laughs> let it upside and, and down. Then, <laughs> and then I remember after that I had the genius idea that like, oh, man, it's going to be busy on the way out. We want to park the, fir- <laughs> like the closest to the exit gate. We want to park as far away from yep. the campsite as possible. <laughs> yeah. and not not like I didn't actually consider that we had to fucking lug an esky and all like gear, yep. like <laughs> 19Ks. Uh. And like... People distributed pretty quickly, and we, I think we fezzed out like and just hung around the the morning a bit. You we know, did. Like, if you try and go, if you try and go crack a dawn, you're not getting out of there. No, nah, like, definitely not. Yeah, no, nah, we did that. A... I remember we, it got toward like after we uh, tossed the tents over. We, I didn't drive because I was scared that I was doing the wrong thing. But you took the car, and <laughs> we drove through the field of where all the like because we wanted to like you know put all our stuff down and then we would go park the car miles away and i think i, can't, I think it was i think it was was it my car i think it was my car that we used yeah it was, and then yeah. you so you used the so you got behind the wheel and we were driving <laughs> through the field of where everyone would be camping and because there was no one there it was just an empty field but there were so many just holes and just lumps of hill in the ground from just past you know corrosion and shit and so we're just sam's just fucking pegging the car through this field just like shit <laughs> i'm just like oh my god what the fuck is going on and we got all the stuff there and we set up but as i but as i was gonna say the best thing i remember about that is on the thursday because obviously we'd finished so we we didn't have to do any more work but then as the festival was going on i remember sitting and sitting on our the camp chairs at the front with a beer just like getting ready for it all and just watching all of our work just break with the with the wind just picking it up and all these people running who were now working to go and fix it and we're just sitting there like yep <laughs> oh yeah it was brutal yeah. we did that wasn't there like a massive storm as well like was that the storm year no that was i think that was 18 but there was just a lot of wind i think that year there was just yeah. a lot of wind yeah. And so it just picked up and just destroyed everything that we did. It was just, <laughs> uh, it was just incredibly crazy. Um, but yeah, that's sort of like you know the scrimming, scrimmage, K-Tai attention, all that came from that. That's where it comes from. <laughs> all that came that's from the that. O- origins. That's the origin story <laughs> of the scrimmage. And then like, I think going on from that, the whole, the whole band idea. I think I think I may be wrong about this, but the whole band idea I think stemmed from the um, the paper sunsets running joke that everybody was kicking everyone out of the band, and that we would then go and do new bands. And because I was the one that always got kicked <laughs> out of the band, <laughs> yeah, I just like for some reason started running with that joke, and like I like took it upon myself to make a band with every member. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Matt and I have a a, a band that doesn't exist <laughs> called put an esca because we love we love pasta yeah that's right yeah put an esca out of that yeah uh, i think like i can't i think oh yeah nick and i had one called dad bods yep <laughs> it's gonna oh. be just acdc cover yeah. band <laughs> oh and there is one like that i'll have to show you that band up there's a band like that that i know of that's really good north come um and then there were, <laughs> i think I, I can't remember what I think ours was scrimmage I know that much yours and Tosh's was also very niche I can't remember it because it was between you two I can't either but it was I know it was something really it was something very very niche but it was good um, but yeah and then I don't even know where the I don't even know where La- Latte even really came from I think it was like I sort of just put it down to the fact that when we were volunteering there was a coffee van in the Unify thing and I had only just started to figure out like, you know, oat milk and almond milk and soy milk. And so every time we went to that coffee van, I would get a different concoction of like a latte with soy or oat or <laughs> almond. And you would just get the same I that. <laughs> long black every time. <laughs> I think you I paid for most that. of them because I paid for the fuel on the way over, I think it was. But something uh, yeah, something of that nature that. or whatever. But like, yeah, I think that's sort of where it kind of stemmed from but like even so i think when i and then we had one practice we had one we think it was one time where we went to your house and we i think did every, it. it was a, i think it was supposed to be a paper sunsets um 
like jam. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> and then like everybody just bailed and you were like, oh, I guess I'm here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we just started <laughs> just fucking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we just started like, yeah, I, I think I think that's where the last day came from. I'm not exactly too 100% sure. But then, yeah, we just literally started just, just like, you know, the scrimmage jam? Like, yeah, fuck it. And so like you got the drums and I just had the bass and we just started just fucking doing dumb shit making noise <laughs> making noise and just literally yelling latte at each other and i think that's literally all that we had i think like i think i'm um, in terms of like you know bringing it truly into fu- fruition you yeah. um you took took the reins a bit like it was when mm. we were working at old delaware yeah and we were both going through the same same evil at different moments mm. be, you know ruminating on it and <laughs> yeah yeah just bloody bloody customers and you like you know with your experience in uh kazaran you had like developed it you like were in, very in that mindset at that point of time where mm. you were like i can write songs like yeah because <laughs> like i don't yeah. know prior to that you hadn't really explored that part of yourself and no. then you were just like I can write songs. I'm just going to write songs all the time. Yeah. This, like, <laughs> yeah, this song was literally the, this is why this song is one of the most important songs I ever wrote. Cause it was really the first one that I actually wrote as a song. Like, cause every, every Kazran song that we had, Travis would write, give to me, and then I would just write my vocals and whatever. But this was the first song where I was like, I will try and write this as an entire song. The funniest thing about that was that I had moved out at this point. And I had sold all my instruments. <laughs> so I had no instruments to actually <laughs> record this with. So I thank my good friend Ben Daddy, who's also appeared on this podcast, for lending me his bass guitar. Um, and also our good friend Matt Ryan, who also lent me his guitar <laughs> for recording with as well. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, like that whole, yeah. I just, it was such a cool, it was such a cool cross of the fact that we had this really weird niche idea. And then we both just found ourselves working as baristas for two different places that were basically next to each other. And that we were both just going through <laughs> like just the same dumb shit every day of just like, you know, just people not knowing what they're doing, people ordering coffees and just like leaving. <laughs> and, and it's just like different things to the point where it's like, yeah, let's just like, I don't know, let's just write a song about this. And so, yeah. I'm very like chuffed that this actually was able to work out and we got to ride that song. I mean, it was the worst demo that you'll ever you ever ever hear in your life. Like I the, <laughs> one of the one of the bravest things I ever did in my life is show that demo to Jack Hartley and Rory and Boy. <laughs> because there was like, that- there, there was no click track, man. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know how to put a click track on. So it was just like Oh, it was so, it was just so amateur before even amateur, just terrible. But <laughs> it got, it had, it had, within a construct, within the construct was an idea and we were able to formulate that idea enough to turn it into something quite funny. So I do appreciate and thank Jack Hartley for helping me out in actually making that into something with the demo that I had <laughs> thrown together. Yeah, with he nailed no, it. He absolutely nailed it. No fucking experience whatsoever. <laughs> Just proves that you can do anything with that experience, but make sure you work with someone who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> But also, like on your back, you know, just be shit and just yeah. do it. Yeah, just <laughs> like I think you, I, I, I'm terrible at it. I get you know that creative paralysis where I'm yeah. just like, I should do something. I should write a song, and I'm just like, yeah. but it will be bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, you just you don't know. do it. <laughs> yeah, then you don't do it. Or you procrastinate. Yeah, so you were just like, nah. It's the this, worst. this is so, this is something. Like it's shit, but it's something. Yeah. And we'll try and bring that and out. Now it is. Now it is something. And now it is something. <laughs> Somehow it is now something. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much basically <clears throat> how it all sort of threw away. But like, and the video. I think recording the video was probably one of my favorite things that I've ever done with you personally. Like, we've done a lot of things <laughs> together through bands yeah. in the nine years or now ten years actually. In the ten years that yeah. we've worked together, I think probably eleven to twelve that we've known each other for. But this was yeah, like, I don't even know. Yeah, definitely, probably one of the f- best things that I've ever done. Um, and fun times, just you know, just the everything, even like just going into savers and just scouting costumes. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> just what, the worst possible thing we can buy. <laughs> yeah, just like what the what can we possibly do? What can we find? And everything was just, like nothing in my opinion was off limits. Like we could have literally just worn anything we wanted to wear, and just used any prop that we wanted to to use. I definitely spent much more money than I expected that I was going to spend, but in the end, 
we got plenty of stuff. So that was that was fun. And Savers is always a quite a fun trip because you never know what you're going to find or you know what kind of people you're going to spot in there either, which is quite you know fun. <laughs> I think there was I think there was a guy who had an argument with one of the staff on that day that we went in who didn't have a shirt on possibly maybe he was looking for another shirt to buy but <laughs> yeah I remember that <laughs> we're just there like okay just we're just looking like complete fools everyone's just looking like, okay. super uncomfortable <laughs> but, but people got to deal with that shit every day but no but for the video we I was able to again I mean I owe this to basically every other person besides myself but I was able to borrow some GoPros from my guitarist and good friend Travis, which was very nice of him to lend me. Um, and yeah, we basically just, I mean, it almost nearly, it almost didn't actually happen because this was, it was getting very close to when I was leaving to go overseas well, to come here. And I remember we like, it was about a week and a half delayed in the end because we were going to do it on one day and then it got moved because it was something went on or something just clashed. And yeah, then we went the week after and it was literally like about a week, I think, until I left that we did it. So, and we had to do it in the day. Like we had to sort of, I, I had planned two days, but we did it in a day, which is just so impressive. So impressive. <laughs> yeah, but even was, so. Like props to you on the like editing end because like I didn't do any of that. And like, oh, that, was, that would have been a bit oh, of a nightmare. That wasn't nightmare. Because <laughs> like... We shot so much footage. Like oh. we got like the standard. Like, all right, we'll get we'll get a take of you know us on the me on the drums, you mm. playing some guitar, and then we're like, all right, that's something. Okay, maybe another angle, and then just the like how quickly it went from like really logistical stuff to like, hey man, do you reckon if you like jumped over that bush and yelled latte, <laughs> that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> Just the ideas, or yeah. like the old, the shed and the chair, like it just yeah. it just descended into fucking chaos so all quickly. This, all the ideas just sort of popped into the brain at once to be like, every time we go into this shed, we'll just be wearing another ridiculous costume, or we'll just do some other silly concept, or what if we have a running joke where this blue chair just keeps popping up everywhere and you just get frustrated, kick it over. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, I like. But yeah, just like I guess because there wasn't like a super coherent plan, it was kind of just like capture some footage and see what happens. Yeah. So we just started got like we got more comfortable as the day went on and just started doing some stupider and stupider shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it just it, yeah, it's I it was it was one of those weird, especially when it came to just like fucking editing it as well. Because I remember I had a day where I first started doing it and I smashed. I was like, I did maybe up to the second I think I did up to the second chorus like I did literally the intro the first chorus and then the second verse up to that last up to the like middle chorus and then I just did not touch it for like three weeks because I went up to it to try and do it one day and I was like I had like a massive block and I'm like oh fuck I don't know what to put now it's so stupid I don't know what I'm doing like, <laughs> and I didn't touch it for like I didn't touch it for like three weeks and I was like oh shit and then as soon as we planned like and you day, moved overseas so yeah well I started editing it when I was over here and then literally when we did the um, when we released when we had the date of when it was going to come out I was like alright now I know I have to finish it now and then I got it finished and it was it was fine like it just there was just yeah. a period where I just hated it and I didn't want to touch it. But I think that's all part of a lot of creative processes that go into video editing and music yeah. making is a lot of times you're just like, man, I don't want to keep fucking doing this. But then it's like, no, you do. You just need to have a break for a bit and step back. But no, nah, it was, uh, you know, such a fun time. and such a fun video to make. And it's, it's, it's cool that it's out for everyone to listen to and everyone to – take uh in their stride <laughs> however they wish to yeah get it on repeat guys get it yes. on repeat it's only two minutes lo- it's, it's only two two, two minutes 18 two minutes 18 <laughs> long the shortest song we've ever written <laughs> that's yeah just, fuck. but like you you we packed a surprisingly big amount into it <laughs> i know it's, it's like so there's crazy. just so much happening like you can't you don't get all of it in one listen you gotta no, listen no. to it at least you gotta, you gotta listen to every word every little bit that goes into it you gotta watch the video and re-watch it and watch all the little niche spots and little pranks and shit that we formulated into the thing as well like there's just a lot that you've got to listen to there's a lot you got to put into it but ah no it's so cool that it's that it's out and you got you got to make a lyric video next Caden. a lyric oh god <laughs> you gotta make it <laughs> i gotta actually i that's one thing i haven't done i haven't actually written, i haven't actually written the lyrics down yet so i have to sort of remember 
remember the lyrics and sort of go through them all. <laughs> but there's so many, there's so fucking That's many funny. lyrics in that thing too, isn't there? But oh god, even so, no, nah, I think yeah, that's pretty much like the the story of this of this of the scrimmage and the and the, and the works. It's uh, I don't know if there'll ever be anything else that we'll do with scrimmage. There might be, I don't know. My brain has sort of thought of a few little bits and pieces, but at the moment, it's just nice for what it is. I think it's really nice just to have a song that was just never really supposed to be anything besides an idea that's now just, you know, out there from the fact of just, yeah, you can, if you come up with an idea, no matter how fucking dumb and stupid it is <laughs> or how ridiculous it seems, it, anything can be done. It can just be formulated and put out there. So mm. it's a, it's quite fulfilling in a way that it's able to be done in that, in that sense. So <clears throat> no, it's been really, really cool. Ah, uh, I don't know if there's anything else we can talk about with scrim with scrimmage because I think that's pretty much about it, eh? Yeah, like um, you know, we did the backstory, mm. <laughs> we did the journey, we did the like. I guess we could talk more about the evil or some of the lyrics. Or... Oh yeah, actually, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Right? Okay, we'll touch into the real nichenesses nichenesses of it, um, especially <laughs> lyrics wise. I mean, the demo was. I mean, the the song came out quite differently than what the demo actually was. The demo had more of a shouting element throughout the entire throughout the entire song. So I had to rewrite a few little bits and pieces. But a lot of the songs and I mean, a lot of the lyrics and stuff sort of just came to me really quick. But it was obviously from both of our experiences. Like you know, the taking forty five minutes came completely from you <laughs> from the stories well like that but you would tell me i i definitely you know the more frustrated i got throughout my shift the like you know the lower the threshold man and i just like got into this habit where like when someone would ask me like also oh, how long is that going to be like that might have been might have even been polite i don't know but <laughs> i would just whatever i thought it would be like i'm literally making their coffee and i'd be like 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be like, oh, really? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Give me their coffee. <laughs> or like, yeah, uh, yeah. I just like, I'll just, just drastically like, yeah, 30 minutes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, I've got a flight to catch. So does everybody, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, so that's another context that I, we definitely should have touched on. So we did work um, at a place called Delaware North in Adelaide Airport. So mm. airport people are very different to regular people. They don't know a lot about anything and they are very scattered. They all become stupid. They're very scattered at all times. <laughs> they can't recognize things that the normal human being can recognize. If you are if you are a person who goes to an airport, please try your best to be human and, you know, just not <laughs> lose your basic human capabilities as a lot of people tend to do when they go and fly away you're not like you know you might be in a new country or you might be in a new state or something but like you know most coffee shops are the same most of them run the same kind of way they're not too foreign or different than how they usually run so but just yeah like any food see. business ever yeah. mm, exactly if you see yeah. a lineup yeah. Or like a you know a massive horde of people hmm. don't roll up you know you got five minutes to your flight boards or oh, I can get a coffee quickly it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> no one else is waiting. For and then eggs. expect to get it in one minute. <laughs> or exactly. is there a coffee there for Steve? Uh, yeah, there is. And there's another Steve, and there's a fourth Steve. Oh, and you're number five. Sorry, so that'll be forty-five minutes. <laughs> you're, you're Steve. <laughs> you're Steve number five. But yeah. And the and the yeah, like it's 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 it, it it really does blow the mind um, when you know people walk into your restaurant and they ask you if you do food and they walk straight past the kitchen where the food is made and they walk past the twenty seven <laughs> menus all placed out on the tables, they walk past the menu on the board behind us that says like fucking special of the day <laughs> and all that sort of shit. But it's, yeah, it's, I know, it's, it blows my bloody mind as well as that. But yeah. it's, it's, it's something that hospitality yeah. people can really sort well, of I, click in together and be like, yes, this also frustrates me. <laughs> <laughs> like one thing I will say is that we did work stupid hours. We were both mm. starting at four. Yes. Uh, the yeah. majority of our Sort of working together. And like, I don't know, you know, we're a little bit short. 
they're extra stupid. <laughs> you know, it's a bad combination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a no, tough definitely. place to work, man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you were definitely working more 4 a.m.s than I was, but I remember there was a stint where we got asked to work 4 a.m. and me and my co-worker, Jean, were completely up in arms. Jean is Scottish, by the way. She's a lovely Scottish lady and probably still <laughs> my favorite co-worker to this day. And we were up in arms <laughs> about the fact that we, because we worked in a bar primarily that served beer um, and coffee second, and so most people would go to a bar for beer, but we don't serve beer until 6 a.m. So if we were opening at 4, we can't serve what we would actually prefer to serve for another two hours. So really, we're not doing much work. <laughs> we're just sitting there at 4 o'clock in the morning. Dude, that whole thing was so stupid. Oh, this is so crazy. Did they do that for two weeks? And they, they were did. like, yeah, it this was, was a bad idea. A we, were like, we were like, we'd be telling you this whole time. Like when you start work at four AM, like eight hours sleep is just not exist. It's just non-existent. It's like if you if you fall asleep at seven o'clock, it's not possible. No, no. It's, unless you fall asleep at like seven <laughs> o'clock at night, or like go to the, go to bed at the time that like a ten year old goes to bed at, maybe you'll get eight hours. But like that's very dependent on like you know if you can actually fall asleep at that time. But yeah, it was just like so crazy. And then like the the evil the evil like um the evil lyric. Is one yes, of my it's probably one of my favorite things that we've ever that we well, I think it was probably I can't remember if it was you or me but that we ever sort of came up with was the fact that you know, every hospitality worker, every barista, every barman, everyone they all have this little door of evil and which should which should remain shut at all times because obviously you don't <laughs> want to be rude or nasty to people like no no one no one does but every now and then you know you get the the customers who are a little bit like uh, uh, and it sort of tests that door of evil and sometimes the door of evil opens up and a bit comes out you try and shut it really quickly so that you like you keep it in but sometimes the evil has a tendency to come out and you know when you start work at five or four o'clock in the morning and you're dealing with airport people the door <laughs> tends to come up in quite a bit and you try and shut it as quickly as you can but sometimes it just you can't you just it, the evil comes out in a bit of a full blown rage, and it's it 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 becomes like fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like you know, I told my boss to get fucked. I told, I told another another manager I didn't like to get fucked, and like, look, you know, I I, I liked them enough. You know, they were nice enough people, but like, Ugh. they would just say something. That was stupid at mm. the wrong time, <laughs> and I've been. I can hold it in for the customers, you yeah. know, for you know, for, for the most part. But mm. like, ah, oh. then you come along. There is the, the door is open, mate. Yeah, you, you've yeah. come and you've decided to come in the back door and see how I'm going. <laughs> you, you can and the front door is on fire, like literally on fire. <laughs> And that's what was so cool about, like, it's like the switching of the, from the, 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 the punk vibe of the start of the song, switching into like the metal, heavy metal element near the end, because the door of evil opens up and the heavy metal comes out and the screams and the yells and shit sort of comes into it. I guess that's sort of how the metaphor of the song kind of works is like, you know, it starts off as a nice, happy go lucky tune. And as it goes, it, you start to get more and more frustrated until the door of evil opens up and all hell breaks loose and you're, go- <laughs> yeah. you're going off at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so true like this is a bit of a tangent but like in the another part of the creative process mm. at the very end was just sort of production and we were like mm. we should add some sounds in we should add some coffee sounds in yeah. and then just going through YouTube and just oh. finding the most stupid coffee grinder oh, that yeah. like if you listen carefully you gotta go listen to the song but if you listen yeah. carefully it's it kind of sounds like a pig scream it it's does. actually a grinder it's a very <laughs> coffee high grinder, grinder. <laughs> thrown, so together, good. thrown together with Sam's yell and my scream <laughs> and it's just yeah it's fucking crazy oh man but uh and the best i mean the i th- well, well we're nearly out of time because of girl zoom but i think one of the really cool ones about the um one really cool recurring thing that we put in the video that i actually found hilarious was the fact of the blue chair um of sam and the and the blue chair constantly at war and I think the main reason why I like it so much is because it sort of paints a picture of the time that you kicked over the bin at work. <laughs> and obviously, we didn't have a, we did, well, we didn't really, we had a bin, but it just looked better when you kicked the chair over rather than it being for a bin. But like, that was a, I, I love that because that just made it real. It made it real for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the evil came out that day. <laughs> Like, we just got we got slammed out of nowhere and just it kind of had like the newbie team on mm. and it was like I think like, oh, she, you know she meant well but she was kind of mm. like 
or this person says their coffee's not hot enough. I'm like, you know, in my head, mm. okay. And like, you know, I'm saying I don't care. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> don't. And then like, yeah, you know, I don't care. She asked me again, can you sort it out, please? I'm very busy. <laughs> just get the and hot like, you water, know, my- click it in the hot water. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Like, <laughs> just, uh, just, just please like, look, like just, just I don't know. It was just one of those things, mm. and then like it bubbled over, and I was like, "Nah, fuck off!" Just, <laughs> just like I was a gentle flick, mm. but there was a lot of rage in that flick where I just flicked over this coffee that she put near me, <laughs> and it went everywhere. And then I was like, "Fuck this!" and kicked over a bin. <laughs> went to the other side of the airport and got a boost juice. Yeah, but the boost juice people are always there for us in our time of need. <laughs> even though their boost juice has cost like nine dollars but even so <laughs> yeah so yeah oh, it's, it's, yeah just i mean and there's it's so much to go into but yeah man like, i remember you, when you first told me that story and i just ah, oh, i mean i even now i'm sort of going back and forth but i think i was on the floor when you first told me that because i was just i think dying i think that was like the first like tipping point because i'm like i actually quite like hospitality and i quite like people so it's yeah, quite same. hard to get on my nerves. It's, mm. it's pretty hard. Like I, I'd yeah. say my threshold is probably like a lot, you know, higher than the the average person. Mm, but mm. like, oh, this job, man, it just wore you down. It wore you down, yeah. and then yeah. <laughs> that was my first big out out outbreak. And yeah. then from there, it was just downhill, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard when you when you start it. You like you know when you start going on that sort of descent, you sort of like ah oh, no, like I've clicked into it, so now I know. Like now I kind of know how I feel, and when that feeling comes out, I know what's going to happen next, and. And that sort of thing, but mm. it was it was rough, man. I said like you know five in the morning till one. You're waking up at fucking three thirty. Well, for you, you're waking up at like two o'clock, especially because we're both. And at the same time, we were both in bands at this point. So you know, we both had times when we were playing shows at the Cranker or whatever. And then so we would go, we would literally play a show, go home, wake up like two hours later. And then go straight to work at the airport. Oh man, that like, fucks me so much. Yeah, I remember doing. I think I did that I, about twice. I think about three times, but you have done that at least four or five, maybe even six. Yeah, I, I, by the end, I was just like, "Fuck this!" And I was booked the day off because it yeah. wasn't worth it. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. Know. Anyway, like uh, I don't know. Shout out to the song. Listen Absolutely. to the song. Find it on all your uh, all your cheeky uh, streaming sites. Thank you very much. And, to, uh, all yeah, the, let's put it on repeat. <laughs> Put this on repeat. Listen to it over and over again. Um, thank you very much to every single um, hospitality company that I have worked for for the inspiration of this song. <laughs> Mainly Delaware North. <laughs> yeah. Um, I appreciate it either way. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning into the Scrimcast with myself, Tension, and uh, my counterpart, k Uh You can listen to yeah. Scrimmage, our little project. And watch it. And watch it. And watch, watch it. it. Yeah, yes. where, is it where, where is it available, Kate? YouTuber. The Uber oh, On yeah. YouTube, listen on Spotify, on. chuck it on repeat, throw it to your friends. Help a barista in need. Support a barista in need. Show them the song. Help them get some. Yeah. Thank you very much.